Welcome to the Pursuit of Truth podcast, where we search for God's truth and where compromise is not an option. This podcast is not about information, but this podcast is about revelation. God is calling us to be overcomers. Let us not be bogged down in lukewarmness, and let us not be carried away by the currents of this world, but let us fight the good fight, and let us run our race that God put before us. Please join me in this pursuit of truth for the sake of God's church. Welcome everyone to the Pursuit of Truth podcast. Today I want to talk to you guys about a topic that is uh, very close to my heart. And over the last month and even years, the Lord has been speaking to me about this topic. It's kind of hard to come up with a title for it. So I'm just going to call it the danger of ownership in the body of Christ. Let me read a scripture to you. Matthew 10, 7, 8. And as you go... Preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, and raise the dead. Cast out demons. Freely you have received, and freely you give. Now, here the Lord is talking about finances. Freely you have received, freely you have given, or you'll give. He's, he's saying, I didn't charge you to receive the gospel. I didn't charge you to receive the good news, and, and you shouldn't do it either. But this principle of freely receive, freely give is, is an important one in the body of Christ. It's a principle that goes through all the layers of Christian living. What do I mean by that? I have seen it over and over again, how a person in the body of Christ will have or assume they have ownership over another person. What do I mean by that? Often we see that in leadership. Often we see a leader that assumes that they have ownership over another person. That leader is pouring their lives into that person. That leader is giving that person truth. That leader is giving that person revelation from the word of God. God is using that leader um, in the body as a minister or, or, what, or in whatever function to bless a person. And that's wonderful and that's God's design. The danger, however, is that a leader then thinks that he has ownership over that person. He thinks he is some kind of an entitlement he uses that person. There are hidden agendas now in that leader's heart towards that person. That's one of these aspects of ownership that I've witnessed in the body of Christ, and it's wrong. We are called as leaders or as, as brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, we are called to freely give. That means when I give you something, and I'm a pastor, meaning if, if you come to my church, and, and you're blessed Sunday after Sunday uh, by the message or, or the worship or, or a word that I give to you or by our phone conversations, and you're blessed by that, well, that's God's design. However, it doesn't mean that I as a pastor now have ownership over you, that you owe me something. This whole idea of owing somebody is not God's design. We give freely, meaning when I give you my time, when I give you my resources, I give that to you freely. There should be nothing inside of you that thinks, oh, now I owe John something. And sometimes God has to change it in, our, in ourselves first. Sometimes it's not even the leader's fault. It's, it's, in, it's in us. For example, a person blesses you with finances and is good to you, maybe gives you a place to live, maybe gives you a job. Very often inside of us, what, what starts to build is this uh, sense or this thought, oh, I owe this person something. And the moment we do that, the moment we think that we owe somebody something, we can't please the Lord anymore. Because now what happens is 
automatically, and sometimes we don't even realize that it's happening, but what is actually happening is that we automatically now start pleasing that person that has done something good towards us. And in my life, the Lord had, had to really address that. There was a time in my life where I was working for a man. I was renting a house from that same man, and, and he also had given me a, a, a work truck. So I was really blessed by, by, by the house, I, I, by, the, by the vehicle. It was a nice vehicle. And I was also the, his best guy, so he paid me the most. And I, I was really blessed. And over time, I realized I had this attitude of, man, this guy has been really good to me. I owe him something. And the moment that that happened, I couldn't progress in the Lord. I couldn't go on with my journey that God had called me on. See, all of us, we have a journey. All of us have a calling. The problem is when we think that we owe a pastor something or that we owe an employer something or we even owe family something, the moment we, 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 we do that, now we don't please God anymore. And what God did in that moment, he actually removed me from that person. He actually um, asked me to move on. And he put me in a really tight spot, a, a spot of faith. Because suddenly I was there without that vehicle. And I had just totaled my other vehicle one week before that. So I had no vehicle. And suddenly my rental agreement or my rental situation, my housing situation wasn't as firm anymore. And my income was gone. But God said it's time to move on. And he had to break this, this attitude or this, 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 this thought life this, this house of cards in my thoughts or my, my, in my, my attitude that I had built up, he had to remove that and said to me, John, you don't owe nobody nothing. And, and somehow sometimes as Christians we, th we think, oh, that sounds, really, that sounds really wrong. That sounds really harsh. But the only person that we owe anything is God. Now, what I'm, I'm not saying uh, break break your commitments or covenants. No, we have people that we walk with and that we commit mid to for the rest of our lives. I'm not, I'm not saying that, but I'm, what I'm talking about is that, that burden, that thought, that, that tell, where we tell ourselves we owe this person something. We owe this pastor something. We owe this employer something. So often, what I just talked about is it has often nothing even to do with the other person. It's something inside of us. And we have to realize that we owe Christ everything. So if we make ourselves dependent on another person, if we keep ourselves in a box because we think we owe them something, because we're not bold enough to step out, we really don't owe Christ. We really can't be obedient to Jesus' plan or to Jesus himself, his plan for our life. So that's what I'm addressing. The other problem is sometimes the person that has been good to us, that has blessed us, that has spoken into our lives, that uh, was the reason we grew in the Lord, that discipled us, sometimes that person will have a hidden agenda. Sometimes that person will give these things to us and there are strings attached to these things. There are strings attached attached to the time they spent with us. They are strength, strings attached to the finances they gave us. They are strings attached to the th whatever they gave us. They are strings attached. And that is not Christianity. That is not what God called us to be. That is not what God called the body to be. The principle that I'm talking about here is freely you give. Freely you give. When you give something with the right heart, there's there are no strings attached. There are no hidden agendas. And over and over I have seen it in the body of Christ where either, either the person that has received freely lives in an attitude of I owe the person that gave to me something or the other way around, the person that has given freely has an attitude of that person now owes me. And it's, it's really a prison for both people. Let me read you another scripture. 1 Peter 5, 2-4 Feed the flock of God, 
which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, which is money, but of a ready mind, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples of the flock, and when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Why am I talking about this scripture? Well, this scripture really is about leadership in the body of Christ. And that dynamic between leadership and the flock, that's often where this, this lie of I owe them something or they owe something to me comes in. Now let's look at it again. It says here, feed the flock of God, which is among you. So God entrusts the leader with a flock of people. He even tells the leader, you have oversight. That's your job. That's your responsibility to watch over these sheep. Not by constraint, though, meaning you're not forced. You're not doing this because, uh, because you're forced to do it. It's by a willing heart. And you don't force the people, the flock under you, to follow you either. It's by their willing heart. So it's not by force. It's not by constraint. It's a free, free offering. The people freely receive you. And that's very important. You cannot force them to follow you. Then he says, you also don't do this for filthy lucre, for money, but of a ready mind. You do this because you believe it's important no matter what you get paid. And here comes the important part, and this thing really has to do with ownership again and this whole, this whole concept. He says, Nor is being lords over those entrusted to you. Okay, let, let us think about this here for a second. God is calling a leader to have oversight. God is calling a leader to protect the flock. God is calling a leader to lead the flock. He's doing all these things. And God even gives the leader authority to lead the flock and deal with things that are going on in the body. But then, then it says here, not being a Lord. What does it mean? Well, a Lord is somebody, once again, is somebody that thinks that he or she has ownership over somebody else. When you go look back into the medieval times, the lords owned the property of the farmers. The farmers, they, were, they owed them money. They owed the lords money. They owed them payments for the land. It's very important to understand this. God calls you to lead. God calls you to have authority. Yes, God calls you to at times to be strong. And, and say, okay, this is enough. This is not good. God calls a leader to do that. But he never called a leader to have ownership. A leader comes and takes care of a flock, just like a father comes and takes care of the family, just like an employer would take care of employees. He, they, 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 leaders come, but the moment that the leader thinks now the people owe him something, the moment he abuses that authority, that's wrong. The word control gets thrown around quite often in the body of Christ. And today the word control has a very bad uh, emphasis or it sounds very bad and it's, be, it's, be, it's being used often to describe a strong leader. Now I want you to think here for, for a second. Imagine you're sitting in an airplane. Imagine you're sitting in your seat comfortably, you're looking out of the window. In your mind you're thinking about the destination that you're headed to, you're looking forward to the adventure. And you're sitting there in that seat and you think about the pilots. And wouldn't you be happy to know in that moment that the pilot has complete control over that airplane? So what I'm, what I'm trying to tell is the word control is often misinterpreted. A leader is supposed to have control. Now, hear me out. 
a leader is supposed to have control. A, a pilot has supposed to have control over his ship, over his plane. There's nothing wrong with that. You as a parent, if you're a parent, you're supposed to have control over your kids, of your household. That's a good thing. If you, don't ha if you don't have control over your kids, over your household, you're not doing the job as a parent. As an employer, you're supposed to have control over the company that you're entrusted with or that you have built up. So that's not wrong. There's nothing wrong to, be, to, to have control. Now, I'm not talking about micromanagement. I'm not talking about um, manipulation. That's something completely different. So while you, you're called to have control, while that's actually your responsibility as a father, as a, as a husband, as a mother, as a pastor, as a pilot, as a business owner, while, while that's your responsibility, God does not want you to think that anyone that is working for you, that's coming to your church, owes you something. I'm talking about this whole topic because there's a lot of damage in the body of Christ. There's a lot of false understanding and there's a lot of wrong control, which means, hey, God has given me this. Now, now they owe me something. God is giving me this position as a pastor or as a, as a father. Now they owe me something. And that's wrong. This problem, if we look at it, goes, 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 goes actually very deep. Let me give you a different example. Let me, let me, let's say God has called you to be a minister of the gospel. And you know that God has called you. Let's say he's called you to Africa and he has opened the doors for you and you're working there year after year and you're building God's kingdom and it's a glorious time. You build up a ministry to build the kingdom of God. God is using you. You know that this is your calling. The anointing flows when you minister. Here, that same problem can happen. Now God is asking you to move on. Now God is asking you to do something else. Now God is asking you to raise up another generation. If you have the attitude of, I own this, I own this ministry. God has given to me. It's mine. That's where the tr problem begins. And it happens to many ministers. They are unable to let go. Freely you have received. God has given you this ministry. God has given you this calling. He was gracious to you. He has anointed you. He has provided for you. Everything that you have, you have received freely. So why do you now think that you have ownership of what God has given you? Very few ministers are willing to let go of what God has given them. Think about Abraham. For many, many years, he waited for God's promise. He waited for his son Isaac. He didn't come up with that promise. God gave him that promise. Year after year, Abraham sat there and waited and waited and got older and got older. Then one day, finally, God gave him Isaac as a son. Now, the son grows up, Isaac grows up, and then what happened? We all know that story very well. God is asking Abraham now, to give up his son, to put his son upon the altar and, and, and sacrifice him to the Lord. Now, we all know that, that this was a test. But for Abraham, in that moment, it was about obedience. We look, up, we look at that story now, thousands of years later, we look at that story with a, it's, 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 it's a lot easier to look at it. But imagine being Abraham. Now the God who has given you Isaac, the God who has promised you that son, who has given you that son, now is asking you to give him back. What was Abraham's heart? He was ready and he was willing to give up Isaac. Why? Because Abraham understood 
that he didn't own Isaac. Abram understood that he freely received this promise and he was ready to freely give it back. Where are you at today? Are there things in your life that God has given you and he's been asking you to give them up, to give them back to him? Are you perhaps a leader that thinks that the people that you are responsible for owe you something? Are you a person in the flock People has been, have been good to you. They have treated you well. They have blessed you. And now you think, oh, I owe them something. God is asking me to go this way. But man, they've been so nice to me, I can't go. Man, they have been, been so good to me. I, I, I can't go, God. I have to stay here because I owe them something. Where are you at? And I'm just sharing these thoughts with you because I have seen it over and over again. I'm here to encourage you today to say, Lord, freely you have given. Freely I have received. I'm willing to let it go. I'm willing to let it go. This person doesn't owe me anything. I don't owe that person anything. I owe you everything. I love you, Lord, and I want to live for you. And I will follow you. And I will not follow that person Wherever you are at, I just encourage you to think about what I shared with you. I hope this blesses you. And I'm just going to pray now. And I'm just going to ask the Lord to touch your heart in regards to this matter. Father, I ask you for everyone that is listening online. Father, I, I thank you that you showed me this lesson several years ago. Lord, I thank you that you have freely given I thank you that I can freely receive. Lord, I just pray for the people right now. I pray for the leaders who hold on to something that you have given them. I'm praying for the, the ministers that are holding on to a ministry or a church or a position that you have given to them. That are unwilling to let go. I pray for the, for the flock. I pray for the people who think that they owe somebody something. Father, I just ask you right now that you would touch their hearts, that you would encourage them, and that you would guide them into complete freedom so that they could please you, that they could follow you for the rest of their lives. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, and see you next time. If you like what you heard today, it really helps us if you like the video, if you share the video, and if you follow us on YouTube, even on Facebook, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. You can find us there, and I would really appreciate if you could help us to spread the good news. Thank you very much.